Last month, 18,000 plus Michigan voters, valid, properly registered voters, cast a vote in Michigan without presenting their photo identification. Those voters were not committing voter fraud. There's certainly no proof of that. There's not even an allegation of voter impersonation with this group of over 18,000 of our citizens who are gonna be affected by this bill. And if we pass this bill, those 18,000 voters or a similar cohort of 18,000 voters are gonna show up at the polls at our next regular election and they're not gonna have their identification. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna to be told that their vote is not gonna count that day because they don't have that photo ID. This is gonna cause confusion and chaos at the polls. There's gonna be arguments, voters aren't gonna understand. Long lines are gonna get even longer. Maybe that's the point. Make no mistake, if we pass this bill and they get signed into law, there will be properly registered voters who arrive at the polls expecting to participate in our democracy only to be told that because they don't have a current ID, their vote will not count. It may not be that all 18,000 of those voters end up being disenfranchised. Some of them may go through the hoops and the rigmarole that this bill asked them to, to go back to their clerk and have their vote counted after everyone already knows the results of the election. But it's not gonna be a small number of voters who are cut out of our process by this legislation. Once again, maybe that's the point. Who are these people? Of those 18,000 voters, 39% of them were in Wayne County. The practical effect of this bill is obvious. 30% of those voters, over 30% of those voters, were just in the city of Detroit. Over 30% of these people who are talking about disenfranchising today with this bill are just in the city of Detroit. So when you hear folks talking about disproportionate impact, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a bill that is meant to cause longer lines, confusion, discourage voters, and even prevent thousands of voters from having their vote cast in our elections. That's no way for the Michigan Republican Party to try to win elections. So many of you may be sitting there and you may be thinking, look, this is no big deal. I've got an ID in my pocket. Everyone should be able to get an ID. Shoot, we're even going to spend millions of dollars trying to provide people with free IDs. So that problem solved, Erwin. You're nuts. This isn't going to create a barrier for voting. Well, I suggest you try to just get out of your comfortable bubble just a little bit and realize that not everyone lives a life just like all of us in this room with security, a middle class income provided by the state, and easy access to identity documents. Some people have a hard time getting to and from a Secretary of State's office and maybe going there and back because they didn't bring the right paperwork the first time. We're talking about disabled people. We're talking about homeless people who might have a hard time proving where they live. But just because they're poor, it doesn't mean they don't live here in Michigan. It doesn't mean that they're not part of our citizenry. It doesn't mean they shouldn't be counted in our democracy. We're talking about people who have a hard time getting identity documents for any reason. It might be because they were born in the Jim Crow South and they weren't allowed to be into hospitals. They weren't given identity documents. Some of these people have to go to court to fight for their identity documents. And I'll tell you what, going to court is expensive. Going to the Secretary of State may be a pain in the butt. It may cost you some money, but going to court is expensive. And we cannot be erecting financial barriers between our citizens and their right to vote. No one, no one should have to pay a lawyer to have the right to vote. No one should have to incur costs because voting is a fundamental right. It is essential to the legitimacy of our democracy and you cannot erect financial barriers to our voting rights. Not only is it wrong, it's unconstitutional. It is a poll tax. Don't do it. Thank you, Representative Irwin.